With the support of the U.S., Raoul Wallenberg left his world of wealth in Sweden for a world in desperate need of a hero. I said stop! A mission to halt the Nazis and the murder of the century. With Per Onger, his assistant, Wallenberg schemed to outwit Adolf Eichmann, Hitler's most evil assassin. He printed thousands of Swedish citizen documents to be given to the many desperate Jews targeted for Nazi death camps. In effect, make honorary Swedes of them all. Being a neutral country, Sweden's new citizens cannot be imprisoned. His strongest ally is the beautiful Baroness Khamenei, whose fascist husband condones the murders. Women and children! For Wallenberg and the Baroness, time is running out to rescue those still trapped in Eichmann's camps, all of them facing death. Tonight, the unforgettable conclusion of Wallenberg, a hero's story. of international law. Come forward. Sergeant, I thank you to assist me so we can accomplish this in an orderly manner. This has all been cleared with Colonel Eichmann. <laughs> he must be crazy. You, sir, I know I issued you a pass. Please go to the car. Thank you. Raoul, come down. You've got three seconds to climb down, mister. Or I'm going to blow your head off. I signed it myself. Get back. You young lady, yes, I saw you at the legation. Go to Mr. Unger. Stay where you are. Release her. She is to follow us to the legation. Go to Mr. Unger. Me, Fisher, I have a pass. Good. And you're going back to Budapest. Grab him. Don't let me lose you. The rest of you, get back to work. All of you are stronger. Touch down. It's out. Sergeant, you will answer personally to the International Red Cross and the Swedish-German Friendship Society if he dares touch me again. Sergeant, what do I do now? Mm, leave him alone. Thank you, Sergeant. Now, if I may proceed. All those with documents, come forward. Come forward with your documents. It does not matter if you've lost some or misplaced them, we have a record. Yes, sir, they took your pass, eh? Yes, yes. Uh, there. 
Yes, you're in the book. Gastner Abram. Go ahead. Come with me. Tell me your name. And you, I know you, sir. May I see your pass, please? I lost it. Go ahead. Uh, just let me see your documents, please. Yes, there it is. There's your pass. My tax receipt. Shh. You think those animals can read? Go on. He has a pass. Good. The oldest will go in the car. The others will follow on behind. Sergeant, I shall commend you to your superiors. Thank you, gentlemen. Who is he? He didn't ask for his papers. He has a Swedish flag on his car, hasn't he? As soon as Mr. Langfelder has turned the car around, we'll follow him back to Budapest. It will be a long walk. But after that, we'll find a place for all of you in one of our safe houses. And perhaps a, a cup of hot soup. No. <laughs> Thank you all for your cooperation. Sergeant, what do you want? Will you leave us alone with a few of those Jews, just for a minute? Yeah, I need a schnapps. You, you with the beard. We haven't finished the work. Behind the bunkers. Move! Move. You! Over there! There. Drop back and make sure they stay close together. Yeah. Keep walking! Keep walking! Dearest mother, today you will get only these hurried lines. Rest assured that all is well with me. Times are extraordinarily exciting. The main thing is that we are working and fighting successfully to preserve the gift of life, as you like to call it. I'm gaining a truer sense of that gift in helping to save others here. And so you must think of me as one of the most fortunate of men. It is not given to many to live such a life. I hope that you are well, and I promise with all my heart that next time you will get a much fuller report. I shall close now. I greet and I kiss you all. Rao. I must say, he seems to have found himself this time. Yeah, I agree. Then why the long face? According to Kalman Lauer, conditions are worse than ever there. Raoul has become something of a hero. And what is conceivably wrong with that? Heroes have been known to die, Jacob. That's what's wrong. Every hour matters. Lives are in the balance. Or I would never have allowed a third party to intrude upon this meeting. With or without Monsignore Rota, you are welcome in my house, Mr. Wallenberg. Call me Ralph. Then it's Lisa. Tell me if I'm wrong, but that day in the flower market, I sensed you eagerly reaching out to, to know, to help. And now the situation is so critical, Baron. Lisa, that I couldn't resist coming to you. You can't possibly imagine Gabor is at all like Eichmann. I don't know your husband, but I do know the party he represents. He is his own person. He could never destroy innocent lives. Then let's put it to the test while we help shape his policies. That is where you expect to make use of me. By allowing your passions, your attitudes to shape mine. They are already your attitudes, Lisa. I will not be disloyal to him. I'm asking you to keep him alive. Because unless he can turn his new power to save lives and not crush them, he will be tried when the war ends and executed. Oh, my God. The point is that need not happen. There is still time for him to disassociate himself from this government of, of madmen. I am bearing his child.
Then you must help him. My child will be fatherless. Not if you act. He has great influence. The only aristocrat in a den of failed shopkeepers and cashiered officers. Soloshi is a convicted murderer. Your husband must prevail upon him to honor the passes, to ease restrictions on the Jews, to refuse to cooperate with the Nazis, and to stop the Arrow Cross from murdering. Show them the word code. You're from Ferenc's headquarters. The detail is being moved. Let march them off to the safe house. What if they don't believe me? So they'll shoot you. Go on. Please be quiet until we get to the house. You, the worst student I ever had. You were smarter. We are scholars. You perform a blessing saving us. I save anyone I can, including myself. You saw them drown our people in the Danube, shoot them in the back, kill the little Jewish children. I saw. So how can you still believe in God? How can you still believe in man? You didn't answer my question. It is beneath me to discuss the Talmud with a tramp. Some scholars. Perhaps you would prefer to discuss the Talmud with the fascists. Where was your Talmud when they shot the little children? Fodor, what you believe and what I believe are different things. This is what I believe in, and it is all that they believe in. Move on. We can hold Budapest. We and the Germans, of course. That's not what I hear. I swear on the cross of the crown of St. Ishvan that no Bolshevik will ever set foot in our city. Wallenberg says the Russians will be in Budapest within two weeks. And what does he know? He's far too busy pulling Jews off trains. He knows a great deal. You've seen him? He was here today. I invited him in the nuncio. <laughs> I knew that. Your priest playing the procurer, was he? Signor Rota is our spiritual advisor. And the Pope is our spiritual leader, and he seems quite disinterested in Rota's compassion for our enemies. Rota has compassion for you as well, Gabor. So has Mr. Wallenberg. And how does the Swede show his compassion? your hand? Does he whisper sweet endearments in your ear? 
We talked about you. Why didn't he come directly to me? He's cautious. He wanted me to hear him first. Ah. A bit of intrigue. Yeah. I like that. What did he say? Gabor. Oh. It would make me so happy if you could help him. Help him? Who gives a damn about him or his Jews? I am thinking of Hungary's future. Isn't the goodwill of neutral nations part of Hungary's future? <laughs> Salas, you might like the idea. Isn't he greedy for Swedish approval? It's all that clever teaching of the nuns. They made you a first-class diplomat. No. No, no, Gabo. <laughs> this is not about diplomacy. thought you carried it off beautifully. <laughs> the little devil. Why wasn't he laughing out loud? I think he forgot how. Come on, come on, come on! Opa! You all right? OK. Raoul? Yeah? Since the Germans are the first into the shelters, why don't we unload the beds while the streets are clear? But the explosions? We'll do it during the lots. Swedish condition that we must refuse to cooperate with Eichmann's deportations, Salashi squirmed and Farency roared with laughter. But you made the first step, and they know you are right. They know it. So tonight, at the cabinet meeting, you must be strong. I will not be going to the cabinet meeting. But you must. You are the foreign minister. I will not be pushed, Lisa. Anyway, they treat me as a child, the baby of the cabinet, not old enough to be taken seriously. No, I will not be humiliated. Gabor, you told me yourself, if the cabinet decides tonight against the protection passes, tomorrow is the beginning of the end. The Jews will be finished off once and for all. The Jews. The Jews. The Jews! The Jews! Haven't I told them for years? Shave off your beards! Cut your hair! Don't be so stupid and stubborn in your ways! You'll only bring trouble on yourself! Stop! I do not want to bring our child into a world where human life is not worth fighting for. Listen, my adorable wife, you know I would do anything for you and our baby. Anything, but I will not! Then you will go! and make them see what they must do.
message from Premier Salashi speaking to you from his office. Tonight is extraordinary session. The Hungarian cabinet has voted with me to observe and support the measures taken by the neutral powers to offer protection to the Jews of Budapest. Bloody Swede! He's protected Jews. What the hell has got into Salashi? Keep moving. 50,000. And 50,000 more until it's over. Cross guards will hear out the honor message issued to Jews by foreign powers. Protected Jews and their houses will not be subject uh, to the new laws. How do you explain that? We, uh, we have a good ferry here. Huh? Should I beware of Swedes bearing gifts? <laughs> Consider them gifts to mark a happy event. Happy event? I'm told Himmler has ordered a halt to the gassings. Please. Oh, thank you. And uh, what else has your intelligence brought you? Or are your American benefactors supplying that as well? What a charming thought. Cigarette? No, I don't. Sure. No, this item is from your own department. Auschwitz is to be dismantled. And this uh, clearly pleases you. After how many dead? Four million? Five, six? It's quite an achievement, eh, Wallenberg? Himmler seems to be having second thoughts about this achievement. It appears he's now trying to save his neck. <laughs> you want me to believe you're not interested in saving your own neck? Oh, what you believe is of little interest to me. Really, Eichmann? What does excite you? <sighs> Let me tell you what it is. The desire to excel. To go to my grave knowing that no one has done more than I toward ridding Europe of its Jews. To accomplish this with distinction, to prove myself worthy. Oh, worthy soldier, that would be a change. Thus far, your career has been mostly, uh, what shall I say, uh, technical, administrative, moving trains, never quite filling quotas. <laughs> <laughs> you conniving dilettante. Well, you tricked the Hungarians into honoring those ersatz documents for a while. Now you're making us think about the marches. Don't be encouraged by your little moment of triumph. I have already got that ass, Zalashi, to countermand his broadcast order. There is still time to cancel the march, Colonel. And since Himmler himself is... Himmler be damned. I'll decide the fate of Hungarian Jews. Starve them. Beat them, shoot them. March them into mass graves 50,000 at a time. I know all about you. You get your money from the Americans, from that crippled Roosevelt. Furthermore, we know your secret as well. Yet you yourself, Wallenberg. Eichmann, you disappoint me, given your reputation for exactitude. The fact is, my great-great-grandfather was a Jew, which makes me one sixteenth Jewish, and not as much as I would have preferred. And now may I make a suggestion? Please. Let's open your scotch. I'm thirsty. Shall we drink to... to honor, to duty? Can you still feel secure, Colonel? continuing to carry out your orders to murder helpless civilians. They give me orders, get them to the camps. 
Well, by God, I'll do it. And I'll keep on doing it until... Until Valhalla crashes down around your head. Not the twilight of the gods, but the death of monsters. Shall we drink to the death of monsters, Eichmann? Get out of here, Wannenberg. Your charm wears thin. I cannot consider this conversation as private. The Vatican and the Red... To hell with them! I'll do you a favor. I'm open to offers. I'll find a train for your heroes for 750,000 francs, made payable to me personally. You can take a few hundred Jews anywhere you want. And the others? They remain. I'll consider it. Good day, Colonel. Thank you, Major. Wallenberg. I want that Jew lover dead before the day ends. Wallenberg, a hero's story, sponsored in part by AT&T. For business telephones, computers, and office networks, AT&T is the right choice. By Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Express Mail Next Day Service from the Postal Service. And by DuPont. Better things for better living. AT&T on office automation. Theoretically, office automation makes business people more efficient. The problem is, most business machines can't share what they know the way people do. What's missing is a way for any office machine to communicate with any other. Enter AT&T. Through an AT&T system, computers, word processors, networks, and telephones from different vendors can all communicate like one big family. In AT&T's world, the key to success is people sharing information with people. And no business machine we know of is important enough to stand in the way. AT&T Information Systems the right choice. This is the symbol of excellence in overnight delivery. All right, you'll have them for the game tomorrow. Don't worry. Hey, and seek one for me, huh? This is Express Mail Next Day Service from the post office. Our two-pound pack is just ten seventy-five, about half what most others charge. And when you need it there tomorrow, we deliver. Parkon sinks it to win. 9190. Express mail service. We deliver excellence for less. Have you driven a Ford? When was the last time you had the kind of car that brings the road alive? Have you driven a Ford? Then you don't know what you're missing. Have you driven a Ford? Driven a Ford? Have you driven a Ford? driver did an excellent job on my car. However, I was not in it. Not in the car. Perhaps next time. Huh? 
Dieter. Dieter! What do you want, Colonel? I'll tell you what I want. I want you to start marching the Jews. And you can march them until they drop. This time I will tolerate no delay. Come out, everybody! Come out, come down, please. Everybody get dressed! One warm coat, one pair of shoes, and one valise. No one is exempt. Don't be frightened. You are being loaned to our German ally for work on behalf of Hungary by order of Prime Minister Salashi. You must obey. Mama, I am school. Shh. Shh. Hello. Hello, operator. Operator. I need seven, eight, nine, zero, zero. Operator. Operator. Put on your coat, Yoshi. my teacher. What? What? Will you call my teacher? Come out, please. My love. I'm a Hungarian citizen. You have no right to leave. Please, we must have everything. Quickly. We'll be here all day. All watches, eyeglasses, jewelry, everything you have. Please, it's for the best. What are we going to do? I, I need, I need to, to see. Okay. Hey. Swedish papers. Huh? Wait. 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 I'm going to get her. No. They're taking her away. I said no. This is Eichmann's work. None of that Hungarian sloppiness. They're going to clear the city out. Come on, I'll walk will do you good. That's the Swedish flag. Let them blow their Jewish noses in it. Follow them. Get word to me where they're headed. Where are you going? Wallenberg. He needs to see me. Oh, why bother? I thought he was just another goy. You know. You most won't believe what I found. Fresh carrots, fresh onions, fresh potatoes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Throw them all in. <laughs> Welcome to our restaurant. I hope you're enjoying your food. Yes. Good. There's plenty for all. Don't worry. Yes, it's random. Go to the house on Venture Street, number 47, basement. Good, good. Eat, eat all you like. There's plenty. Always plenty. This is random. Venture Street, number 47, basement. Good. While I'm back, somebody told me you wanted to talk. Who are you? You tell me. Shepi Porka, Branislaw, birthplace Krakow, in Budapest as registered alien. Religion Catholic. Perfectly acceptable. As you can see, we're also feeding the sisters. I'm not here to eat. Oh. I'm Teichholz. This is all lies. Except the part about my being Polish. Eichholz, you're with the Vada. I hear you're good. But, uh, difficult. Did you get your head busted fighting with the partisans in Poland? Did you have to come to this country illegally like me? I'm impressed. That's why I sought you out. Why should I do anything for you? 
Brother's doing fine by itself. Indeed it is. But we are overlapping in certain areas. Uh, with your printing business, in particular. And who in hell are you to complain about our pastors? Do you know how many lives we've saved with them? Oh, hundreds. Nevertheless, you and I are beginning to overlap. It's causing problems for people carrying our passes, and we're saving thousands. That's your claim. That's the truth. So redirect your hostility, if you will, toward the enemy. I'm on your side. What do you want from me, Wallenberg? Not that I'm delivering. I want access to the Vada's underground bunkers, Mr. Tychowicz. And you damn well better deliver. Because if you don't, every one of these people will be rounded up with the rest of the Jews in Budapest and sent off on a death march that will have no survivors. I tell you what, I got room for about 300. A thousand, and make room. And make room. Shake hands. 1500. Sei mir gesehen.